Okay, guys, good morning to y'all. We are live. Invite you to come join me. It is 10.57 a.m. on this cloudy but very, very warm. It's supposed to be sunny today. What's up with that? Anyway, very warm Thursday morning. It is the 18th day of April 2019. Invite you to come join me as we look a few verses of scripture this morning for our devotion. Um, as you know, if you've been watching all week, we've been talking about the Holy Week and talked about um, the triumphant entry to Jerusalem that happened on Sunday, and then we talked about Jesus cleansing the temple on Monday, and then he was teaching in that temple on Tuesday. Wednesday, he was healing people in the temple so there's great use of the temple after he got rid of everything that wasn't that didn't belong in the temple and we know that christ will do the same thing for you and i he will cleanse our heart sanctify us set us apart so he can use us not just spiritually but even physically he will use our bodies to do the work of the lord if we will just set ourselves apart from things that don't need to be in our lives in our heart so we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to look at Thursday, um, Holy Thursday, or what they call Monday Thursday, M-A-U-N-D-Y, Monday Thursday. And we're going to learn um, exactly what that meant, why they called it Monday Thursday. <clears throat> and so bear with me. I've got some information here that I was studying. been very busy this morning, but I really want to get this devotion in. Lord willing, we won't be interrupted um, but I'm going to try to go quickly. So um, let's get right into this. Monday, Thursday. This is the name given to the day on which Jesus celebrated the Passover or what we call the Last Supper with his disciples. So when you think about um, what Christ did, he, they got in the upper room. They had that Last Supper. You see many pictures um, and portraits of this Last Supper. We're going to talk real quick about what that meant and why you know they called it the Last Supper, which sort of we know because you know that was the last time that they dined with each other. But there's a greater um, um, purpose for them to meet up than just eat their last meal or what Christ would be Christ's last meal um, with his disciples but it is a celebration of the Passover if you go into the book of Exodus in chapter 12 you can read about the original Passover when the um, Israelites was about ready to be led out of Egypt after being in bondage for 400 years and every time Pharaoh would let the let God's people the Hebrew children go he changed his mind and he'd bring them back another plague would come upon them you know the story I'm sure and then the last plague was going to be the plague of the death of the firstborn of of every human and every animal and the death angel was going to pass over and the angel and the Lord told Moses and Aaron to tell the people to have the Passover of the lamb they took a lamb that was two years old or younger that had no spot no blemish there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever told them told them how to sacrifice the lamb told them how to eat the lamb told them what to do with the blood and they put the blood on a hyssop and they used it and they put it over the doorpost and then when the death angel would pass if they see the blood of the lamb and children that a preach that makes me happy just thinking about it but when they see the blood of the lamb the death angel will pass over you listen aren't you thankful that if the blood of Jesus Christ the lamb of God if his blood is applied on our heart when the death angel comes listen and the Bible teaches us it's appointed for man to die. It's appointed for us human beings to lay down this life. However, our soul will never die if the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to our heart. And when the pass, when the, the angel passes by and sees the blood of the Lamb, blood of Jesus Christ applied on our heart then he's going to pass over us there's no judgment that will come against us so that's what the passover was back in exodus and jesus and the disciples was celebrating the passover once again in the upper room and what they were doing they had the last supper but it was a communion and this passover was because the lamb of god the son of god was about ready to be for once and for all the final sacrifice for sin and so they were um, celebrating and, and observing the Passover. And there was two important events that happened on this day, on this Monday, 
And I'm, I know it sounds like I'm saying Monday, M-O-N-D-A-Y, but it's Monday, M-A-U-N-D-Y, what they call Monday, Thursday. Number one, if you look in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 19 and 20, we'll read of the communion. We'll read of what they had, what Jesus and the disciples uh, partook in. And it says in verse 19, And he took bread and gave thanks and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then it goes on, it says, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And so once again, he had the Passover or, or, or the um, communion of the bread and, and, and of the wine. Um, and, and this is where we get you know, our communion today. You see a lot of people that will you know, take communion. And this is what they would do. But secondly, what had happened, and this isn't you know, very um, popular um, this day and age in Christianity. Maybe, you know, a lot of times I see country churches do this, but I don't really see a lot of big churches, big name churches, do this. But this, to me, is just as important, if not even more important, than the first. And we looked at the communion, but now we're going to look at the part two of after the communion, after they broke the bread, after they drank of the wine, then they said that Jesus had washed the disciples' feet as an act of humility and service. So therefore, once again, Jesus Christ is setting an example to the disciples how to treat one another and verse you know thus setting the example for you and I because we're Christians Christian means Christ like you know we cannot be Christ like or you know we can't be a Christian if we're not Christ like so, I don't care who you are and what you say and what you believe and what granny and grandpa taught you. Listen, if we don't act like Christ, if we don't forgive like Christ and love like Christ and, and, and help people like Christ helped, then, you know, how can we be a Christian? How can we be, you know, a follower of Christ if we're not nothing like him? You know, oh, well, that's not Bible. Yeah, it is. And, and, and we, we can... We can talk about that later on if you like and I got very many scriptures to teach you that we need to be Christ like we need to be like Christ but Christ set this example and you can look in um, St. John chapter 13 verses 3 through 17 and it will show you about the foot washing and and, and you'll learn about um, what took place you know Peter said you know well you're not going to wash my feet you know Lord you you know you're not humbling down to wash me and wash my feet. And, and Jesus said, well, if I don't wash your feet, then you're not part of me. And then Peter said, well, not just my feet, but my hands and my head. He said, wash me all over then because I want to be a part of you. But I want to look at the word for a moment, Monday, M-A-U-N-D-Y, Monday. This word was derived from a Latin word for simply command or commandment. So when you look at the word or the term Monday, Thursday, what we're actually looking at is a commandment Thursday or command Thursday because Jesus gave one of the greatest commandments ever uttered out of his mouth. And that was to love each other and to serve each other. Could you imagine what our church world would look like? Could you imagine what our world as a whole would look like if we all would observe? I mean, listen, there are people that will line up 10 blocks to take communion because there's no sacrifice in just eating a piece of bread and drinking some grape juice and saying, oh, okay, I took communion. There's no sacrifice in that. But it takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of um, self-sacrifice to humble yourself and wash somebody else's feet. Ooh, I can't stand feet. Ooh, you know, that's so nasty. And ooh, I just never be able to do that. That is so icky. Well, listen, Jesus Christ did it. Yes, I said icky. But listen, Jesus Christ did that. Jesus had humbled himself. The Son of God, the Savior of the world, humbled himself and would wash each one of his disciples' nasty old grimy feet. 
I mean, they probably wore sandals, which was, you know, their feet was probably dirty and their toenails is probably dirty. And, you know, yeah, you can get a nasty picture of what their feet may have looked like. But Jesus didn't look at that. He looked at he was going to humble himself to serve his brethren. What in the world could we accomplish if we would humble ourselves and serve one another? You may say, well, you know what? You don't have to wash somebody's feet to serve somebody else. No, but it's the humility of it. And, and let's go on because there's more I want to cover. So when you hear the term Monday, Thursday, you will now know that it refers to the command that Jesus gave to the disciples at the Last Supper, that they need to love and serve each other as you and I need to love and serve each other today. Now, I will tell you this, the Bible does not command or forbid us to partake in communion or foot washing. You know, as, you know, as far as the rituals, there's no commandment nowhere in the Bible where it says you must partake in communion. You must wash your brother's feet or women wash your sister's feet. And I do believe that should be separate, you know, because we need to do things in order and in decency. Um, however, there's no scripture that says you have to or it don't say, you know, we forbid you to do that. Don't do that. There's no Bible for that. However, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, also in our main text we read in Luke 22, verse 19 and 20, it says that as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So you can take communion. I hear people criticizing some churches because they have communion every Sunday. You know, listen, the Bible doesn't say that that's wrong. Only thing that Christ said is as often as you do the communion, as often as you would wash your brother's feet, do this in remembrance of me. Don't do it as vain repetition. Don't do this as, you know, just something that you do every week. But remember Christ, the body that he gave for us. He, his body was bruised, is broken for us as the bread is broken. The wine obviously represents the blood of Jesus that was spilled on Calvary. And as often as you partake in this, just remember him and what he's done for us. That's the only thing that Jesus requires when we partake in communion and in foot washing. Um, however, none of us are exempt. And I, and I want to drive this point home. There's no commandment saying you have to do communion. There's no commandment saying you have to participate in foot washing. That is a preference of each individual. However, every single one of us are, ex are not exempt. None of us are exempt from the commandment that comes from the foot washing and communion. And what I mean by that is he did this to show, you know, that we need to love each other and we need to serve each other. So whether you take the foot washing, whether you take the communion, that's up to you. But you're not exempt from the commandment of loving and serving each other. So you got to remember that. Um, again, let me wrap this up. You know, it says many will participate in communion, some every week. You know, again, which is fine as long as we do this in the remembrance of him. But, you know, here's what's becoming rare. And I've seen this so many times. You know, well, you know, I don't mind doing the foot washing or, or do, doing the communion, but it's a foot washing that kind of bugs me, kind of bothers me. Listen, I've in 29 years... As a Christian, I've participated in almost, well, more than just um, once a year, some occasions, of foot washing. And I tell you what, the first time that I ever had foot washing, um, I was very, I felt very uneasy about it because, you know, it's feet and it's icky. But then when I started praying, and listen to me, church, when I started praying, mm -hmm. And I'd say, God, humble my heart that I'd be able to kneel down and wash somebody's feet. Help me to have the humbleness that you have to be able to do that. And I can't explain hardly in words what happened to me. But something in my heart just, I don't know how to explain it, just almost melted. And, and I just felt such a peace to wash my brother's feet. Folks, listen, and I wanted that feeling in my heart for the rest of the for the year, for the for the rest of my life even. I want to have that humbleness. Christ wants us to be humble. 
And sometimes it takes actions like washing your brother's feet. And I'm going to share this story, and I'm going to try to be as sensitive as, as I can. But one particular year, we had foot washing, and there was a bunch of us guys went into the back room. The women went into the church. They'd done their foot washing. Us guys was privately doing our foot washing. And there was one particular person that was in there, and his feet was nasty. I'm not even joking. It was nasty. And um, just dirt under the toenails. I mean, you name it, and it's nasty. And I know people that's watching this are probably saying, oh, you know, why in the world? Listen, I prayed, and I, and I actually, the way we did it, we had an equal amount of guys in the room, so we just sat a, a, the basin down on the floor, and then we sat one guy on either side of the basin and made a line. And I purposely was going to try to get down to the other end and not be in front of that guy. And the Holy Spirit just pricked my heart and said, you want to be humble? Here's your opportunity. And I sat, so I made sure that I sat in front of this guy. And when it was my, our turn to wash each other's feet, and I got down there, in my mind I was like, there ain't no way, there ain't no way. But then I started praying and I said, Lord, I want to be humble. I want to have a humbled heart. Listen, folks, you think, oh, I want God's blessings. I want God to use me. I want God to do this and that. If we can't even humble ourselves down to wash somebody's feet, how in the world is God expecting us to, how, how can we expect God to use us or trust us in any other thing that we don't want to do in life? See, what we're saying is, God, I want the easy stuff. I want the blessings. I want the things that comes easy. I don't want nothing to gross me out. I don't want nothing that causes inconvenience. I don't want nothing that makes me have to work for it. I don't want those kind of blessings, but those are the best blessings. And I remember kneeling down in front of this man and washed his feet. And that poor old bowl of water turned black immediately. But there was a blessing that came down in my heart. <laughs> that I'll never forget. Was it because I washed his feet? Probably partially. But there was a Spirit of God that just seemed like rested right in my heart. And I felt that humbleness. And for a moment, I, I seems like I just felt the way Jesus felt when he washed his disciples' feet. And I tell you, there was nothing greater than humbling down, humbling your heart. There's nothing greater than humbling yourself and humbling your heart for God's will. You do that. I guarantee you, you humble yourself and you worship the Lord and, and humble your heart to do some stuff that you're not very comfortable in doing. And you watch the showers of blessings flow down. And listen, in doing so, we can go into Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. I'm not going to read it to you. I trust that you'll read it for yourself. But this act of washing feet, this act encourages us to serve as a reminder, if you will, of how we should live like Christians. Look in Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 and 11, 1 through 11, and listen to how Paul describes how we should act and how we should live as Christians. And it begins with humility. It begins with us humbling our hearts, humbling ourselves for the service of the Lord. Jesus humbled himself before the disciples. Are we greater than Jesus Christ? Absolutely not. But there are blessings when we humble our hearts. Love each other. Serve each other. Those are the commandments that we get. Listen, there's so much for Monday, Thursday that we can talk about. But I don't have time, and I wish I could. But, it, with, you know, when Jesus broke the bread and, and, and they drank the wine for, for the Last Supper, they, Jesus was talking to them. Jesus predict, predicted his betrayal. Jesus knew that one of the disciples in there was going to betray him, which was Judas. Jesus knew that one of his disciples that was sitting there eating with them was going to deny him three times. He called Peter out on that. He said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows twice. He knew this. He knew that his, he was ready to be arrested. He knew that he was ready to be tried and, and, and ready to be put to death. He knew these things. That's what took place during the communion. 
But then the foot washing, he said, listen, love each other, serve each other. This is the commandment that he gives you and I today. Lord Willem, we'll be back on tomorrow. We're going to talk about Good Friday. And why would we call it Good Friday? What was so good about this Friday? Tune in tomorrow. Um, we will probably try our very best to go on about 9 a.m. if possible. But we will talk about Good Friday tomorrow. So listen, um, celebrate Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday. It represents commandment. Monday, Thursday. Command Thursday. What was the commandment? To love and to serve each other. Listen, have a great day. Um, remember what Christ done for us. Remember the sacrifice. Remember the communion. Remember the foot washing of the service that he did for his disciples. Let us have a heart of Jesus today. Listen, thanks for watching. Love you. God bless you.